Hi, this is PD at Bergsdorf Arcade at bergsdorfarcade.com and this is tutorial number nine in our little day-night cycle. So let's go ahead and open up Unity. Now I mentioned at the end of our last tutorial that if you don't have the pro version of Unity, you won't get any shadowing happening. Like you can't have dynamic shadows. But there is one more setting we can use to add a little bit of realism to our game. So I'm going to go up and turn off our game timer so we don't have the day-night cycle going. And I'm going to hit start. I'm going to get the sky into position. Uh, let's say right about here. And then if I click outside of the game window, we'll notice that when I move my mouse around, it's not actually moving. So let's go up to our render settings. And when we look at ambient skylight, if we were to actually change the values, now I've just got the sliders here. If I were to start changing these values, you notice how it affects our scene. So if we fade from one color to the other, such as, oh, let's pick a nice gray color. That's what we start with. Now if I were to kind of fade into a darker color, it kind of gives the appearance of night as well. So let's add this functionality to our day-night cycle as well. So I'm going to set the defaults back to normal. And I'm going to go into Mono Develop, and I'm going to create two more public variables. Now there are quite a few things we actually can add that come in our render settings. So if you had the you have fog, the fog color density, you can even change you know, like halo halo strength. Now if I was going to be adjusting a lot of these, I'd probably just build a separate script to hold you know my default values and my blend values. But since I'm only going to be playing with the ambient light for now I'm going to add that right to our game time script so I'm actually going to turn game time back on I'm going to head back into mono develop and right at the end of our public variables I'm going to add two more and they're going to be colors and I'm just going to call this amb light min or we'll do max first so this would be the color uh, uh, that our ambient light is going to be at night. And of course we'll need one for the day. Oh sorry, the, the min is at night and the max is during the day. And if you want to add fog, this is also almost exactly the same way you would do fog. So we'll save that off. We'll go back into Unity and we'll notice two little uh, color pickers. So let's go ahead and pick one. Uh, I know by default I'm going to want this for the day. And at night uh, I'm going to want something darker. Maybe around there. Maybe a little bit darker. So we'll pick those two. I'm going to save that in Unity. Head back in. And then I'm going to want to make sure that I'm adding it to the light setup. So setting or set up lighting. I'll just jump straight to that function, set up lighting. And just before this for loop, I'm going to want to access the render settings. So we do that by going render settings dot ambient light is equal to then whatever we set for our, our min value. So I'm going to say ambient light min, a little space there. And that goes into our render settings and sets the ambient light to our nighttime light force. Now in order to have it fade throughout the day, if we come down to our adjusted or adjust adjusting light function, uh, the first thing I'll look at here is I notice that this block is the exact same as this block. So let's just get rid of those. And I'm just going to move it outside of those blocks. And of course, I've got to get rid of these. I want to tab this back in a bit. Now we are going to have to make POS uh, go back one scope. 
so it has access to it. So float, well, I'm just going to copy this line. And we'll go to default value of zero. That we had before. That cleans it up a little bit, makes it a little easier to read. So to increase the ambient lighting, we're just going to come down here into our Brighten. Actually, we don't have. We don't even have to do that. We'll just come down here and do a render settings. Dot ambient light is equal to our ambient light max times POS. I'm going to leave a space there. Uh, that should work. I'm also going to move this debug statement out of there. Uh, let's just go give it a try and see if it works. Now I'm going to go ahead and set my default light to something crazy. So, I don't know, blue. And let's try that out. So we'll start it off. I have a compiler error. I can't define the variable there because I'm already defining it up here. And parse the error. I need one more parenthesis here. And this should all go away. Great. So let's start it up. We'll notice right away it jumps to gray, which is our default color. We really should be looking at our render settings though. So we'll watch this here, our ambient light. So let's start it up. And it jumps to the dark gray. Then as soon as daytime hits, gets really dark. So I'm going to go take a look at that. So I'll head into Mono Develop. And uh, here's the problem. Ambient Light expects a color. And what we're doing is passing in a color times a float. Uh, that's not going to give us the desired effect. So what we can do to fix that, if you actually wanted to know exactly what's going on, uh, before you make any changes here, just come down here and throw a debug dot log statement and just output your oh well, we might as well do it the ambient light variable and you'll see that it's not actually giving us the colors we want so we'll wait for it to start up then as soon as the day hits if we stop it right away and go look it's starting us off at zero in the red zero in the green zero in the blue and point zero zero one in the alpha channel and then it's just slowly scaling them up. Not what we want. So I'm going to comment out this line and make it the way we actually want it. So we're going to create a new color. And this new color is actually going to be ambient light min plus ambient light max. Then we'll want to do each channel. So dart dot R for red. And I'm actually going to put this on a separate line for each one. Don't forget your dot R here because we want to take the ambient light of our min, get the red value, then add the ambient light max red value times the position. And we can just actually cut and paste this in because we're just going to be changing the color channels that are being used. And I'll tab over paste in the next line and we want to do the green channel so green green make another comma and come over and do the blue channel B and a B now we don't need to do the alpha channel and I don't really see any benefit to doing it in our example so I'm just not going to bother with the alpha channel. I'll just leave it to whatever it's at by default. And I'm also going to need a semicolon there. 
Uh, that looks good. Let's go ahead and take a look. No errors are popping up. So we'll start it up and take another look. This should fix it. So daytime comes and you'll notice that your ambient light starts getting brighter. Now the way we have it set it might get a little bit brighter than our max light, but it shouldn't get that much brighter. And it's scaling down. There we go. Now we're just over 10 minutes in this video, so I'm going to call this one you know, done. And in the next one, I want to go over how to create light maps for the people that don't have Unity Pro and don't have access to dynamic shadows. Uh, while we can't actually fake the dynamic shadows, we can at least uh, create light maps to bake some shadows into our terrain. So there's at least some sort of depth added to it. Well, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.